What's going on DMG clan today? We are going to learn how to set up our Pico Fly SD card error. It's not really an error, but basically the no SD card screen that you see right now so that you can play your hack switch, whether it's you hacked it yourself or maybe you just bought a hack switch on AliExpress. So I'm gonna level up your gaming knowledge even more before the end of your demise. It's supposed to be 2024, by the way. That is right, mobile gamers. So we have the no SD card error. Not really an error. It's more of a, hey, you just didn't set up your SD card for your hacked switch or switch light or switch OLED. And today I'm gonna show you how to configure it, get it ready to go. It doesn't take that long. It's very easy, especially with the pack that I compiled for you. That is in the link in the description below. Don't go just jumping over there and grabbing it and putting it on your SD card because that's not gonna do much of anything if you don't follow this guide. It's very easy to do. There isn't rocket science behind this. If your PicoFly chip was installed correctly, then you'll be able to do it. This is for educational purposes only. For those that have a hacked switch, I believe that you should be able to do whatever you want with the hardware that you own, that you've paid for, that you've spent eight hours a day, eight days a week to work for and buy and do with what you want. So the first thing we're gonna do is you're going to grab a micro SD card. With all of my rant out of the way, that is all you're gonna do. Grab a micro SD card, plug it into your computer. Now, once it's in your computer, you're gonna download the files that I put in the link in the description below. And what you're gonna do with those files? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now. You're gonna download the Atmo 18.1.0 DMG Clan zip file. You're gonna right click on it and you're going to click extract all and you're going to extract it to whatever folder you wanna extract it to. I'm just gonna extract it to the default folder that it's gonna extract it to and wait for it to do its thing. Now that that's extracted, you're gonna see a whole bunch of files in here. You're gonna put this window on one side, you're gonna put your other window on another side and navigate to wherever your SD card is. So look for your SD card and it should be blank if your SD card is brand new. You don't need to format it to FAT32, you don't need to do anything to it, just leave it the way it is. Now you're gonna grab all these files and you're just gonna copy them to the root of your SD card, meaning the main folder on your SD card. Don't copy the folder, copy all of these folders and files. What I mean by that is this folder right here, don't just copy it onto the root of your SD card, it's not gonna do anything. Now that all those files are copied over, we're done with the computer for now. So now we're gonna grab our micro SD card and we're going to plug it into the bottom of our Nintendo Switch. So I'm gonna do that right now and pop that right in there. And we're going to power it on by pressing the power button. Don't hold it, just press it. And then you'll get a little menu called Hakate. Okay, so that is the menu that you're gonna see. You're gonna to go to tools. You're gonna to go to partition SD card, click okay. You're gonna to go to the little red line that says EMU MMC raw. And you're gonna scroll that line all the way until it says 29 full. You'll see 29 full on the right hand side. Click next step. Click start, wait for it to count down. Now click power to continue. Let it do its thing. All this is doing is creating a partition on your micro SD card. So let it do this and create that partition for you. Now that that is done, you're gonna click okay. You're gonna click close. You're gonna go home. If you're not at home, then just go home. Now you're gonna click on EMUMMC at the home and you're going to create an EMUMMC and you're going to click on SD partition. You're gonna click part one and you're gonna let it do its thing. Now this takes some time, so just let it do its thing. That depends on how much data is on your internal storage of your Nintendo Switch. Now that that is done, we can click close and then click close again. And we're gonna click on payloads at the home menu. Click lock pick RCM, turn your device like this, press the power button, and then press the volume plus button, which would be the top button. Now you're gonna press any button you're gonna go all the way down to where it says reboot into Hakate and then press the power button again. Turn your device back over, click payloads again, click fusey.bin and you will be booted into atmosphere. Now I have Zelda Link's Awakening inside my device right now. And the reason for this is because we're gonna get into the homebrew menu. Now you can get into the homebrew menu by pressing on the photos icon or the album icon as well, but a better way to get into it is to go into the actual Akate homebrew menu that is supplied for you. Now, another menu you might want to actually look at is pressing L down and the actual R3 button. 
and you'll see that we have status monitor overlay which is our status monitor to show our fps counter and all that fun jazz and we can also look at our sysclick manager which allows us to overclock our device so a lot of uh, games like um zelda for example benefit from you overclocking the device now you're going to consume more battery but it will allow for the game to run stably at 60 fps and if you use mods then yes you'll be able to do that as well now you're going to press the r1 button and hold it down and start your game now you're going to get yourself into the actual homebrew menu at this point and a very important tip for this is to go into the 90 dns setter because if we click on this mine is already blocked because i have my dns setter set to block all of my actual servers on my computer my router and stuff but if you want to block them yourselves you're going to go to 90 dns setter and then you're going to select click to apply which is the x button and it'll apply it to all your wi-fi networks which is very important because you don't want to be able to access the network for nintendo switch obviously because your device could get banned if you get caught trying to play online and that is basically it there's the homebrew app store i got sysclick manager you can go into the sysclick manager and set it to enable or not um, press the start button to get out of any of these apps there's tinfoil tinfoil will allow you to install your uh your actual games that are plugged into your device now sometimes it bugs out and gives you black all you have to do is just get out of it and then go back in as you can see here see it says <laughs> it's all black so if you get out of here go back into it and then go back into your homebrew menu again it shouldn't be black it's usually doing that for the first time running it i don't know why but if we go back into it it's good to go as you can see we can see all the text and everything and then that little menu that popped up is just literally a menu saying hey do you want to install this press ok like yes and then it'll install that game directly to your sd card why is this good well the reason why that's good is because i can keep my physical game in my cartridge slot and then i can take this with me and have a whole bunch of games installed on my device and that is what i have done i have taken all my games the 50 games that i have and i've installed them onto my micro sd card which is very important for somebody that likes to travel and they don't want to bring a whole bunch of plastic with them everywhere and just keep it on their shelf at home that is about it guys hope you enjoyed that again this isn't rocket science it's super easy to do and i hope you get your pico fly chip set up easily by using this guide have a nice day support me on patreon support me as a member or just send me a super thanks if you found this video helpful. Otherwise, just a view is good enough as well. Bye-bye!